Thank you for joining Creatively Yours. This is our first episode and I'm your host, Jen. Today with me is my bestie, hey, <laughs> Carrie, uh, to provide love and support because I'm pretty nervous about shooting our first episode. As am I. <laughs> so our first episode today, the theme is V's. We're going to look at vision boards, uh, Valentine's Day, and of course, vino. vino. That's our favorite. We drink a lot, but don't judge us. Um, <laughs> and, and then uh, we have a question that came in from a viewer. So we're going to answer those questions as well. So thanks for joining us on Creatively Yours. New Year's is over. You've recovered from all of the chaos of the holidays. Or have we? Or have we? Um, and so everybody talks about New Year's resolutions, and I don't know about you, Carrie, but like I never fulfill my New Year's resolutions. No. <laughs> but I'm going to try this year. Yes. Healthy living. Yes. More travel, and putting on the best wedding ever. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so for me, like I hate New Year's resolutions and I actually in the past five years have started doing vision boards and I've unfortunately trapped Carrie into doing vision boards with me. <laughs> and so this is kind of our annual kind of vision board thing we do. Yeah. Yeah. So vision boards are really a great way for you to just focus on yourself. Be a little selfish because we're never selfish. Never. <laughs> no. uh, and look at what you want to accomplish in the upcoming year. And I think that vision boards are more positive because you can envision what you want your life to be instead of trying to pinpoint the things that your life isn't. So when you're That's good, yeah. <laughs> so when you're doing a vision board, the most important thing is that you try to meditate before you actually do a vision board, and you think about the things that make you happy, like mm -hmm. your dog Clark. Yes. Oh, I should have brought him. <laughs> uh, and you know all the great things that just make you feel at peace, and all the things you you really love doing and are passionate about. So once you meditate on that, I think it's important that you just focus on yourself, yes. like. We often focus on our families and work and all these other um, situational things around us. And so it's just about you. It's about you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So if this is your first time doing a vision board, um, there's different ways you can do it. I'd say stick to the traditional. Okay. But I'll just I'll just show some varieties. Yeah. yeah. So this is a vision board, <laughs> my Vanna. Uh, this is a vision board that I did one year, um, and I just wanted something pretty that I'd want to look at, and I just used words. So you can just be as simple as that, and just putting words that are around your vision for the I year. I haven't even seen this one. You haven't seen this one? No, I haven't seen that oh. one. Yeah. When did you do that? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't with you. <laughs> it's very nice. Thank you. Oh yeah, I wasn't. You weren't with me then. Yeah. Uh, this is the one I created for this year. So I love to doodle. I love to doodle. Yes. Uh, so I essentially doodled um, all of the things that I want to accomplish this year. So for me, it's like, you know, just uh, building my career, letting go of things that don't serve me anymore. Bye, Carrie. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love you. Uh, uh, GSD is the theme of 2020 for me. Like, get all my shit done this year. Mm -hmm. My boys. Um, and then can't touch this is just living authentically and not worrying what other people think, which is what this whole channel is about. Mm -hmm. um, and then just fulfilling my sommelier dreams, eating healthy, being healthy. We're trying to be healthy this year and just financial freedom from those kind of burdens. So mm -hmm. your vision board can be anything you want, anything you're comfortable with. If you're a painter, paint your vision. If you're an artist, do those things. But mm -hmm. if this is your first time, you're intimidated, um, we're going to show you. I'm going to steal your vision board. Mm -hmm. She did a big one because she has a lot of visions. <laughs> um, but this is a vision board that you can create at home. And it's really easy to do. Like, I think this took us like oh, half like, an hour yeah. or so. Yeah. Um, and so get your favorite magazines and go through it. And yeah. so this obviously I wanted to travel. I wanted to wear pretty dresses <laughs> <laughs> and not become a vegetarian. Oh very important for some people yeah. absolutely um, so I'm just gonna put this aside and then we can go back to it but if you want to create a vision board you can do it really unexpected in, in inexpensively <laughs> thank you I haven't drank wine yet I swear um, inexpensively and you can just take a visit to your local dollar store 
uh, they have different canvases available. So they have these very thin canvases, which you can easily frame and put at your desk. Mm -hmm. um, and this one was like $1.25. Uh, this one's very simple. And they also have thicker ones that um, are very much canvas style. You can also do travel ones made out of file folders. Yes, that's another one we like to do fun. as well. If you travel a lot, you can always bring your vision board along with you. Yeah. So Carrie, you're going to be my Vanna. So okay. you just need a canvas and then you need some paints. So the reason why we do different acrylic paints is just to add your favorite color. Um, I, I find this just kind of adds like color to oh, your life. It and it's just fun. Yeah. It zhuzhes it right up. Yeah. So what you would do first is just paint in whatever color and whatever pattern you want. Mm -hmm. And these are also, these paints are available at the dollar store. Paint brushes are available at the dollar store. So, so far we're probably at like $4. Yeah. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Um, cheap, cheap, cheap. Uh, so just paint your canvas, allow the paint to dry, and you can just touch it to check if it's if it's dry. Mm -hmm. And also if you just put it uh, against the light, you'll see the shine. And if it's suddenly dull, yeah. then your canvas is dry. You could probably dry it with a hair dryer if yes. you're in a real hurry. Yes, yeah. and for our scrapbooking friends out there, you can use your, your heat. Your heat gun. Your, your heat, heat gun. Yeah. So once you've painted it, um, you're gonna allow this to dry, and then you can take your magazines. You wanna grab the magazine? Oh, that's yes. so appropriate for you. Yes. She thinks she's royalty. I do. <laughs> yes. So magazines, if you have them at home, um, there's tons on Virage Sale or Kijiji where people are trying to get rid of magazines. Recycling station. Recycling station. Oh, good call. Thank you, because mm -hmm. we wanna be friendly to the environment. Um, so go through your magazines and just look at things and even if it doesn't make sense, if there's a picture that appeals to you, a word, uh, yeah, imagery, a statement, a symbol, yeah. it doesn't matter. As long as it talks to you or resonates with your heart, um, cut it out. And it may not make sense now, but I assure you at the end of the year, it'll make yeah. a lot of sense. All comes together. Yeah. I think yes. one year I used the word light and I was like, what does light mean? And I was like, I got rid of like a lot of toxic things in my life. So mm -hmm. it made sense at the end of the year. So. Go through your magazines, cut them out, and um, start placing them on your canvas as you're cutting them out in terms of placement so you can kind of see what the layout looks like and try to make it pretty. Don't yeah. just... Don't just slap it on. Yeah, we don't we do not do that. No. Uh, and we'll call you out on it too <laughs> if we see you do that. Um, and then the other thing you need, which is slightly more expensive, is Mod Podge. Mm -hmm. We always have some uh, inner crafting Scraps, stuff. Scrapbooking world. Um, if you're buying it at Michael's, definitely look for your 40% off coupon because we use that religiously as well. Yeah. So when you use your Mod Podge, I encourage you to just put a little bit on a plate or a palette of some sort, just so it doesn't dry out the entire bottle. And you're gonna use a brush. Uh, you can use a regular paintbrush or a sponge brush. A dollar store also has the sponge brushes if you wanna use their brushes. Mm -hmm. It's just as good as Michael's. Um, and you're gonna wanna paint on the back of the image, yeah. stick it on, and then you're gonna paint over it. Because um, if you don't paint on top, it will end up peeling yeah. back, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, we are excited to see your vision boards. Please post them up and tag uh, at Creatively Yours. Um, and and we'll, Carrie and I will review some and share some and talk right. about some of our favorites from what you post. Um, and we're just looking forward to an amazing 2020. 2020. Yay. Yay. Thanks. It's January, but all you mamas out there uh, and us, like we love to do things for our coworkers as yep. well. Um, January is the time you should be prepping for Valentine's Day. If you want to reduce the amount of stress, stress. Yes. and if you have multiple children with 20 kids in their class, that quickly adds up. Um, so it's getting cold. And it's cold outside. And nobody wants to be outside. And nobody wants to be outside. So might as well do a craft. <laughs> and this is a great way to spend time with your kids, get them ready for Valentine's Day, and just kind of get back to the roots of crafting. I think we've kind of... Away from video games, yes. TV, <laughs> iPads. Phone. And I know it's easy to go to the store and just pick up a Valentine's card, but I think there's just a certain beauty and, and love mm -hmm. um, and pride that comes about when you produce a really great craft. And it could lead to a lifelong hobby right? hobby <laughs> yeah it's yeah. an expensive hobby but it's a hobby yeah. um so today we're working on valentine's uh gifts and treats for co-workers kids, kids lovers 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 okay <laughs> um and so 
One of the things I just wanted to point out is you always have to be aware of special dietary requirements for kids. So um, there's nut allergies and so gummies are ideal. Um, I actually looked and I found out that gummy bears can or cannot be uh, gluten-free. So oh. definitely look at your research. Weird. Yeah, I but no I love idea. Starbursts. Starbursts are my favorite and they're colorful and they're fun and they kind of go with the motif of our craft today. Mm -hmm. um, so I chose Starbursts. Make sure they're wrapped candies. Yeah. Nobody wants oh. an unwrapped candy. Yeah, you don't trust people. People can be nasty. Yeah. No offense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, to start off your craft, you can go to the dollar store um, and you can grab like, sorry, I'm stealing like just these cute stamps and your kids can pick them which makes them enjoy them okay. i love puns so you're going to see like a lot of our crafts today have puns like and also make sure that they're not offensive because there was a stamp yeah. in here that said sweet buns i'm like oh i can't oh, yeah i like that one <laughs> I know, I <laughs> that's the one i went through. i can't bring that to work or give it to kids <laughs> but there's like sweetie pie stuck on you and then my favorite one is your radish your radish your radish your radish that's <laughs> Um, so there's really cute stamps. So oh, let's be totally awkward together. Awkward. Oh, that's, that's so cute. us. Yeah. That's really us. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab your stamp. Um, you can grab like acrylic stamps, which are fun, and then your quick dollar store stamps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't have an acrylic block, so I'm just going to wing it. Wing it. Ugh. I'm going to do the radish one. So what is the rule of stamping, Carrie? Um... Have fun. I can't remember. We don't have else. fun when we're scrapping. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna see. Look at me, look MacGyver. At you this improvising. So when you're stamping, um, you don't. We don't just. Da, 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 you don't do that. Nope. You actually take your stamp pad and you do a kind of a circular motion over the surface of your stamp. You doing that? Yep. Is yours all? adhere to yep all right so, so once you've got it done you're gonna put it on your white and you're just gonna stamp make sure to put even pressure even oh the, I never do that. on the stamp yeah so then it's a clear image perfect you got yours look how cute that is yeah put it in the camera and they don't see what how perfect look you're how cute that is. Carrie is a better stamper <laughs> than I am so uh, so once you have your stamp we're going to do something called watercoloring. Yes. So um, we, because we're crafters, have these Tim Holtz distress, distress crayons, crayons. But you can use at home, like I would grab a sandwich bag and just put some Mr. Sketch smelly markers and just rub it on. Mm. And then you take your brush and you just add a little bit of water and then you can paint into your image. Mm -hmm. uh, for today, because we're crafters, mm -hmm. we have these water pens. So do you wanna, you can demonstrate because you're really good at watercoloring. I don't think I am. <laughs> Let's see, I'm just gonna do this. Yeah. You know purple? And you can just run it in there on my little palette thingy. Yeah. And you don't need a lot, right? Yeah, no. And so what's great for this particular craft with kids is it doesn't have to be perfect. Watercoloring is never, you know, specifically Perfect. in the lines and you don't have to fill in all the gaps. Uh, Carrie's a really Although good color. I do that. Yeah, she's a little bit OCD, <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, so this is a great craft. And then once they're done watercoloring it, it's a great opportunity for your kids to practice their motor skills and cut it out and just cut out a line. It doesn't have to be a perfect shape. Look how fun that is. You are so amazing. I'm so glad you're on the show today, Carrie. Do you want to try? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing, I did like all of these yesterday. Oh, that's so, true. Right? Okay. Um, so once you're done, you can cut them out. And you want to cut that out. Mm -hmm. And um, what you can use is, I think I forgot my double-sided tape. <laughs> okay. So you can buy these doilies at the dollar store as well. They come usually in white. Red's not um, one you'll probably find very easily, but you can buy these cute little brown paper bags. Really simple, uh, doesn't have to be fancy. And I know that dollar store has a lot of little Valentine's bags as well that you could use. And you're just gonna use double-sided tape or you can use, um, uh, 
What else do we use? Oh, glue. You can use glue. You can yeah. use a glue stick. You could use pop dots to yeah. pop it up. So I'm just going to stick my doily onto the paper bag and then carry. Oh, wait, I have foam tape for you to pop it up. Okay. This foam tape on Amazon, it's inexpensive, and you just need to cut your piece off however big you want it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Perfect. <clears throat> there. And then, to the camera. How long did that take? That was like three seconds. Yeah. And then your kid can stuff the bag and there you go. So it's a really easy craft to do, super fun, super in the season. And uh, I always, like if I got these for Kale and Connor, I would keep them just as a memory. So mm -hmm. super fun, reusable. You can take off the doily and reuse it for <laughs> somebody true. else. Uh, but it's a really great Valentine's gift and it'll keep everything super simple for your Valentine's kidlets or co-workers. Yep. Um, and it's not something they're going to get time and time and time again. No. So just something unique, quality time with your kids, and the perfect craft. Thanks. Here we go. All right, it's Valentine's Day. We've covered vision boards, and now we're on to wine. Um, so I love wine. Karen loves wine. <laughs> I know nothing about it, but I love it. Yes. So I just want to talk a little bit about beginner basics for wine. So when you're drinking wine, it's important that you go for the bottles with quality. I know a lot of us like the fast food wines that are like your $10 and under wines. And typically those types of wines are mass produced without any love and care and, and when you buy a bottle that's like in the 20 30 dollar mark those wines have been curated and cared for and loved and hand-picked and there's a lot of beauty that goes into wine so when you're paying for those wines you're getting more quality grape juice uh, and just a better production of wine um, before we talk about this wine in front of us uh, I just want to talk about some basic wine etiquette so when you're holding your wine glass you should always hold it by the stem wine is a super delicate <laughs> delicate um, delicate drink and the heat from your hand can actually alter the flavor and the taste of the wine that's in the glass so when people do this like I just Twitch a little bit. Yeah, I slap your hand actually when you do that. <laughs> um, just to ensure that um, you're not impacting the quality and the flavor of the wine. So this wine in front of us, are you excited to try this? I am. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this wine is from Castillo Mon de Montserrat and it's a Spanish winery. Um, and this is a Grenache, um, which is a specific kind of grape. Um, this wine retails for, I believe, $14, but like when you look at the flavoring and all of the components to this wine, it's a lot higher value. I would say it's probably $40 value in my mind. Wow. Yeah. So um, first we're going to just swirl the wine. Oh, you're so good at it. Okay. Give me I've up. had some practice. <laughs> um, and just start smelling the aromas of this particular wine. There's like berry. What are you getting, Carrie? Berry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a wine you connoisseur. You can't copy my answer. I'm not a wine. Okay. I'm not a wine -o, No, but so. there's, I like leather. There's, there's leather? leather? Yeah, there's a bit component of leather. Am I drinking leather? <laughs> <laughs> there's kind of like a hint of tobacco. I, tobacco, tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> you say tobacco, I, I say tobacco. tobacco. Um, but, um, spice? Yeah, like, it's really spicy, like herbaceous, mm -hmm. kind of like a veg vegetable kind of note. Mm -hmm. So like smelling wine is kind of like your trailer, like a movie trailer as to what you could potentially taste on the palate. Sometimes it can be totally different, but sometimes it gives you a really good preview. Mm -hmm. um, and based on like what you're smelling in the wine, it kind of tells you the complexity. So if you're the leather, the tobacco, 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 <laughs> uh, that just demonstrates the complexity of the wine. So this one's fairly complex. Yeah. Um, well, let's take a sip, Karen. Red wine. I don't like red and this is very nice. <clears throat> so the reason I bought this wine by the case, 
don't judge. <laughs> uh, the reason I bought this particular wine by the case is because it's an easy drinking wine. So people of really nice. Yeah, of varying palates will enjoy this wine. Um, I don't taste leather though. No, you won't taste leather. <laughs> you won't taste leather. It's just on the nose. But like you taste the berry. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. there's a lot of berry on it's, there. And it smells spicy, but it isn't. No. It's not no. spicy. Yeah. You have to talk, you can't just drink this, uh, oh, this sorry. section. <laughs> so isn't there something about legs? There is legs, but like this one doesn't have a lot. I was gonna say, yeah, what's the thing about the legs? Well, sometimes it just talks to the thickness of the wine. Other people believe uh -huh. it's the alcohol. I, I for me, I just, legs. there's a leg. Like, see? Well, there's one. Yeah. I don't have any in mine. You have long legs. I do. <laughs> So this particular wine, because it's so easy drinking, this is the kind of wine I'll bring to a party, I'll bring to your house. Yeah. Uh, it's the kind of wine I'll gift if I'm coming over to someone's home for dinner. Um, and the best part of this wine is it pairs with a lot of things. So you can pair this particular wine with any tomato-based stews, pastas. Uh, it goes with most of your red meats. How do you figure that out? Just on the flavor, like you can taste it on the flavor. That's a good question, Carrie. I've never oh, known thank that. You. Yes. Um, so it pairs really well with red meats and all of those things, and you can kind of taste that it'll bring out um, a lot of the flavors from the tomato because it complements it so well. Um, and it's just a really good bargain wine. Like for those of us who have new vision, vision boards mm -hmm. of like being budgetary, um, mm -hmm. budgetarily responsible, like this is a really great wine. It's one that I share with all my friends. Mm -hmm. You got a bottle. Yeah. You get a bottle, you get a, a bottle. bottle. <laughs> um, and it's just a really easy drinking wine. Like I think um, for people with different palates and different flavors and different things, like you like white I'm, wine. I'm a white sweet. Yeah. Moscato kind of girl, and yeah. this is actually very this good. This is really a nice wine, yeah. um, and I just enjoy it. I think it's the right price, it's the right quality, and it's got a lot of the right flavor. So this is my wine pick of the month. I encourage you to pick it up. If you're looking for, if you're in Alberta and you're trying to figure out where you can purchase this wine, go to liquorconnect.com, I think it is, and you can just type in um, Castillo de Montserrat. This one is a specific oh my god particular i'm drinking too much specific? this is a specific <laughs> wine because this is on 30 year old vine so look for the label specifically there are a lot of varieties of this particular granacha and this particular winery um, but this is my favorite wine for january don't a lot of people choose their wine by their labels they do i do well this would, is this would you choose this be... well it's a fun it reminds me of jesus wearing yeah. uh christmas balls in his beard <laughs> so i would <laughs> Because it's fun. No, it's it's a beautiful label. It's very beautiful. Um, yeah, it's I sparkly. believe in my research, and uh, the winery can correct me if I'm wrong. This is actually uh, an image of one of their winemakers, oh. uh, Mr. I can't read his writing. Well, that's fun. but it's on the bottle. Yeah. But again, like this is a really great wine. It's beautiful. It looks elegant. If you were to bring it to someone's home, they're going to be like. Oh, Carrie, you spent a lot of money on me. You shouldn't have. Secretly. You know, yeah. and it tastes like the like a higher value wine. So mm -hmm. highly encourage you to drink this wine. It's my favorite wine for January. Question. Why, yeah. why do you let it aerate? Oh, thank you. I totally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so even though wines are inexpensive, you absolutely should let them aerate. Well, they've been in the bottle for, depending on the wine, for a considerable amount of time. So you want to let that oxygen back in. Before we drank this, I aerated it for 20 minutes because I love you and I don't want you to drink bad wine. <laughs> um, and it just allows the oxygen to interact with the wine and bring out those delicious flavors that are inside of it. So and you never chill red wine. There are certain wines that you can chill and it'll tell you specifically on the label. Oh. Um, on their technical sheet, they do say that you can chill it, but oh. I... I was thought red was warm, white is yeah. cool. Well, there's even carbonated red wines that are in market right now that people are enjoying. So, I mean, it's not my... Mm -hmm. I've tried them and I'm not quite a fan, mm -hmm. but highly recommend people to try different wines, different times, but this is absolutely my wine selection of the month. So now we're at the portion of the show where people and viewers have asked a question and I've siphoned through the ones that I 
um, have answers to for those who've already asked questions. It is in triage, like you will, I will answer your questions. Eventually. Eventually, I will get to it. But I wanna make sure that when people ask questions that I answer it thoroughly and think about it and I'm thoughtful about it, I'm not just throwing out a quick fix. So I'm just gonna read uh, the question that came in. Hi Jen, I saw your Facebook post. I'm struggling to reorganize or rather um, sort all my albums, including iPhone photos. I love the idea of printed pictures and still have lagged on over this over the years. Um, and then she asked, this is Glenda by the way, uh, if there's a tangible item attached to a pic, I keep it. So if I take a pic at a movie theater, the ticket stub is taped next to the pic. Dance photos are with the dance programs, trips are with the airline tickets. So it's not just the pics I want to keep and I'm not a scrapbooking person. I want to be able to put the pic in an album and any tangible memory to include without scrapbooking because I'm not creative. So thank you, Glenda, for your question. So Carrie and I love to scrapbook. Mm -hmm. It's part of our... I started in 1995. I started because of you. Yes. Now we're <laughs> so a cult. This is our bestie language. This is something that we do religiously. We even travel to scrapbook. So absolutely, if you're not a scrapbooker, I have some solutions for you. But like, we just wanted to show some options. So. You can scrapbook in a large format. This is a 12 by 12 format. And for some people that's a little bit intimidating, but mm -hmm. like... I find a 12 by 12 easier to do than mm -hmm. a smaller one. Okay. Um, I don't know why. Maybe because that's what I started with. Yeah. So I find it harder to do the smaller ones. I have done smaller ones as well, but I do prefer the 12 by 12. And I think when we started, it was harder with 12. It was easier with 12 by 12 because the pictures were formatted that way. Yeah. I think now there's options to print photos smaller. smaller. Yeah. So um, if you want, this is an 8 by 8 album, which is also available if you want to just scrapbook. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, photo albums. Uh, that you can just print your photos and yeah. go to Costco and pick them up, which yeah. is another option. Um, simple, simple. Simple, simple. Um, we we work really hard on our scrapbook, so it does take time, and I, I don't know. A lot of money. It. And are we ever on time? Like, are no. we ever current? No. no. So we're always years behind. <laughs> so that's the challenge of scrapbooking. Mm -hmm. um, some other options I just wanted to outline. So I have. Um, um, Thank you, Heather, for this really cute case. Um, <laughs> I have this HP Sprocket, which is, um, you can charge via USB. It doesn't require any ink. You can buy the photo paper online through Amazon or anything else online. Uh, this was a gift from my man. Thank you, Rob. And I use the Sprocket religiously uh, for just doing the things that you're asking, Glenda. Like, I'll just print it from my phone or I can print it from Facebook. Like, it really gives you a lot of flexibility on how to print. And it takes two seconds. Yeah. Like, it literally comes out, but you have to make sure it's charged and you have to make sure you have paper, which is one of my challenges. Mm -hmm. So, I highly recommend using a Sprocket if you just want to print small things. And so, you talked about movie tickets and photos and programs. So, there's a book called A Smash Book. And we, we used to do this quite religiously. Yeah. Um, so what you can do is you can um, jerk diarize because there's this handy pen that's attached to the book. Um, and you can put in photos. Let me, yeah, here. So in this one, I think I went to uh, 3D Adventures in Guilford. So I glued on all the tickets um, here and then you can just journalize everything you want to put in the book. Mm -hmm. So for example, I have these Star Wars ticket stubs. I could absolutely just print off a Star Wars poster, mm -hmm. stick it in using double-sided tape, um, and then you can keep this book. And the Smash book is specifically designed to hold a lot, a lot of those things, yeah. and it won't get too bulky. And not necessarily like a scrapbook where it's all neat and tidy. Yeah, It's just supposed to be fun, quick, dirty, and yeah. No pressure. No so pressure. If, even if I feel, like Carrie and I always feel that everybody's creative, but if you yourself don't feel like you're a creative person, I highly yeah. recommend the Smash Book mm -hmm. um, and then using the Sprocket to print out your pictures with your ticket stubs and then attach them in. You can also use washi tape to adhere mm -hmm. into your book. Mm -hmm. um, and these books are available everywhere, I yeah. think. So you can just order them online. You know what I've also done for quick things? Yeah. Is I've bought a one of those, what are they called? A frame, like a, th not a 3D. A photo box? A photo box frame from like Ikea or wherever. And I will print off a picture and then I'll print off the stub and I'll attach it and I'll just throw it in there. And over the year, I have it built up of everything that I've done throughout the year, every show, every ticket, whatever. And there's a, just a quick picture 
and then the ticket stub with the date on it, and then I hang those in my scrapbooking room. You're such a nerd. I know. But again, that's a really great idea, even though you're a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you, Glenda, for your question. I think next week uh, we'll be talking about time management and how to manage your time. So I'm working on finding some solutions for that because we never have enough time in our day. Especially when it comes to scrapbooking. <laughs> Especially when it comes to scrapbooking. Um, so thank you for joining us. Please follow, like, share. All the social media information is down below in the comment section. And we'll be shooting our next episode in February. Um, and we'll be talking a little bit about St. Patrick's Day. Mm, um, my people. Your people. Oh yeah, you're Irish. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about more wine and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Maybe Carrie will be here. Hey, let's cheers to that. Let's cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers. cheers.